morning to our students and colleagues. Uh, our today's workshop is on the literature review and uh, theoretical framework. Um, let me quickly go to my my objectives for this uh, presentation. Um, from this presentation or from this workshop, um, you'll be able to know what is literature review and a theoretical framework, uh, the purpose of literature review, and how to identify a gap during literature review. And we'll also touch on the process of conducting literature review, uh, a bit of academic writing and paraphrasing, and we'll also touch on the different uh, different approaches of writing literature review and also the effective use of uh, discourse makers during uh, literature review. And we'll also uh, touch on the issues of plagiarism and how to avoid it. And also the last, um, how to write a theoretical framework. Maybe let's start with uh, the concept of literature review. What does it mean? Uh, borrowing it from um, researchers like Mare, uh, it is a critical or analytical account of existing research on a particular topic. So meaning um, the literature review can be regarded as an overview of uh, research on a given topic uh, with the view of answering uh, the related uh, research questions that are, are in, your, in your study. Then is purpose then the purpose of uh, literature review firstly um, you need to show what it has been done uh, in the related area or what has been done in the research topic that you are trying to investigate and then from there, you need to uh, to interrogate or you engage critically with the debates around that particular topic uh, of your study. And then the most importantly, you need to reveal the findings of you know other empirical research that are related to yours. And you try to show us what are the gaps or the existing gaps that uh, the previous studies uh, did not address. And then from there, you try to streamline the literature to align it with your research objectives. Uh, this is to, to, to ensure that uh, you are reviewing uh, the, the literature that is relevant and uh, related to uh, your study. And then um, let's quickly look at how can one uh, identify a gap uh, during this process of writing literature review. Um, you can use uh, the research approach uh, to identify the gap. Maybe the study that you are reviewing, um, the approach was maybe on quantitative, and your current study is going to be on qualitative approach. So that can be used as, as a gap in that particular study, because obviously um, the approach uh, or the research approach of quantity and quality they are completely different. Therefore, you can use that as a gap to, to say, even though this study is related to mine, I'm going to use qualitative uh, as opposed to uh, generalize the finding through the quantitative approach. And then you can also use the focus uh, or the study focus. Um, studies may be related, but not addressing the exact issue that you are intending to address. Um, you look at the focus that the study that you are reviewing was was based on, and then you may find that your focus is slightly uh, different to what you are exactly uh, looking at. Um, let's I can give you an example with schools. Let's say you are doing a, a, a particular study in a particular school. So you may find that the literature that you are reviewing was based maybe on primary school while you want to do your study maybe in high school. So the, the, the focus there is a bit different, even though they may be similar, but they are different. And then you can also use the geographical context to identify the gap during a literature review. Uh, some studies can be conducted in a different context, uh, which can result into different uh, findings or outcomes. Uh, 
The study that is conducted, maybe for instance in America, cannot be used to generalize the findings in South Africa because the geographical context are different. So you can use uh, the context as a, as, a, as a gap as you review your literature to say, this study is related to my study. However, the context are completely different. So this current study will be conducted in this particular context. And then again, you can also look at the, the date of publication. Some of the studies that you may be reviewing may be outdated as you, you, you relate to the current situation. So, so you can use that as a, as a knowledge gap to say, though this study is related to yours, However, it has been conducted in the olden days and that cannot be used to address the current affairs as, as your knowledge gap. Then the process of conducting your literature review, and then firstly, you need to identify the key ways that are related to your topic or your problem. And then you try to search for or you identify the relevant information. And then from there, you obtain copies of the literature and then you try to create your own reference list. And then as you read, you need to take notes for your literature review. This is to help you to not to be tempted to copy and paste particular information to avoid issues around plagiarism that we are still going to talk about. So taking notes is one of the way of assisting you to use your own ways uh, to write your literature. And then from there, you can start the process of writing your literature. Then let's look at the essence of literature review. And then as a writer or as a researcher, you need to prove to the reader that you are informed about the most relevant or the recent information in a particular uh, area. So you need to convince the reader that you know what is happening in, in your particular area. And then you also read the recent literature around that space. And then you must also show that you have a good understanding of the main published work in that particular area um, by, by articulating it through your literature. And then you must also um, look at the materials such as your online material, you look at your books, you can look at the dissertations that are published previously. You can use look at the peer review articles um, that are recent or current in your, in your, in your area. And as you write your literature review, there are some verbs that you must be familiar with, uh, which will help you to write in, a, in, a, in an academic way. I know there are still some other workshops on academic writing that you are going to, to get from the college, but this is just to just touch on the key um, issues around academic writing in a way to assist you how to conceptualize the theoretical framework. Um, there are ways that uh, as a researcher you use to convey a, a neutral position. So such ways you can use ways like uh, point out, you can use suggest, you can use indicate, you can use describe, you can use comments, you can use remark, you can use um, reports. And then if you want to convey a message that is you are not certain about, you can use words like allege, you can use declares, you can use speculate, you can use claimed, you can use postulate, content, and assets. So if you are implying in an, in an agreement of some sort, you can use words such as establishes, you can use affirm, you can use confirm, you can use proofs, convince, demonstrates, or show. So if you are stressing a strong negative uh, point of view, you can use words like refute, you can use discuss, you can use stress, you can use advocate. And then if you are stressing a positive attitude, then you can use proposes, you can use edges, you can use declare, uh, contradicts or challenge. And then just to look at more uh, reporting verb as you write your literature review, these are the ways that you can use that are more on, on of, of, of reporting, uh, ways such as assess, claim, declare, examine, content, uh, report, maintain, mention, explore, support, insist, say, state, believe, introduce, uh, suggest, write, 
uh, comment or imply. Then there are linking ways that are very important to make your writing very rich. Um, let's say, for instance, you want to add to a claim that you have just uh, written down, and then, then um, to connect to that particular idea, you can use uh, linking ways such as in addition, you can use uh, furthermore, you can use moreover, you can use again, you can use equally important or similarly. Um, if you are, if you want to prove that your claim is valid or more valid, and then you can use because, you can use since, or for the same reason. And then if you want to compare and contract, contrast a particular argument or statement, you can use ways, uh, linking ways such as yet, while, where is, or you can use in contrast, you can use however, you can use contrary to, you can use on the other hand, and then so on and so forth. And then if you want to indicate exception uh, to what you have just claimed, you can use nevertheless, you can use still, you can use yet, uh, in spite of, despite of, of course, and then if you repeat something that you have already indicated or already said, then you can use in brief, uh, or you can use as I have noted or as indicated. So if you are emphasizing your point, then you can use words like uh, obviously or definitely or in fact or undeniable or without reservation. So if you are addressing or indicating some sequence of issues here, then you can use linking ways such as firstly, and then when as you connect to that idea, you can use secondly, or, or you can use next, or you can use following, or consequently, or simultaneously. Then if you are indicating some examples in your writing, then you can use for instance, you can use for example, or you can use in another case, uh, take a case of, or you can use demonstrate or to illustrate. And then if you are summarizing or you are concluding, then you can use in brief, you can use on the whole, you can use in summary, you can use as I have shown consequently, or you can use due to. And then if you want to show some relationship between certain ideas, and then you can use because, you can use since, you can use therefore, or as a result of, or due to. And then if you are showing an um, adversarial position or two constructing uh, statements, you can use connecting ways such as although, you can use even though, you can use despite the fact, or with uh, uh, not with, uh, withstanding, or you can use um, nevertheless. And then if you are clarifying a particular issue, then you can use in other ways and then as, as a way of writing. I'll stop here and um, give it to uh, Dr. Kitong to continue with the, the presentation. So in terms of uh, paraphrasing, uh, you want to say what an author said, but you want to use your own words, uh, but you want to keep the same meaning, the intention of the author but you want to say it in your own word. And that is, or paraphrasing is also one of the ways through which you can avoid plagiarism when you are writing. And uh, the more you are good at paraphrasing, the better your work will be, uh, the better the flow will be, and the, the better, um, the easier it will be for others to read and understand what you're saying uh, without committing any academic uh, crime, which is plagiarism. So uh, there are two types of plagiarism. Uh, you can cite the author. You can say what someone said without citing them. Uh, it means you just copy and paste what they said, but you don't acknowledge them uh, when you're writing. And you can write a phrase that is too similar to what they wrote, so too similar to the original. Um, so when doing a paraphrase or when paraphrasing, you need to be mindful of three things. You need to use your own words. The meaning mustn't uh, change. The same meaning must be conveyed uh, from what the primary author intended. <clears throat> so in terms of writing your literature review, there are different approaches. Uh, and you can compare and contrast the views. So you will say, OK, while John said this, 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 Smith said something else. Uh, something different from what John said. 
So that's an approach, uh, that's a way of, of contrasting, presenting contrasting views. Uh, you can also uh, put together some authors uh, who have said something and then point out another group, one or more authors that have said something contrary. So you group them together. Those who are saying the same thing, you put them together. So Smith and Jones um, both show that blah, 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 blah. However, uh, the Gauchin and maybe, I don't know, uh, Fiton say something else. Then you are showing the, 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 the contrasting views, you are grouping them together and you are presenting them in such a way that the reader understands uh, the different uh, arguments or the different points uh, that have been presented by the different authors. So the prominence, the author prominence approach, you want to emphasize, you're emphasizing on the author. Maybe it's a, a, a renowned author, an expert in the field, you want to emphasize on what they say. And you start by uh, Mokele, uh, 2014, argues, blah, 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 blah. Or according to Moleke, you, you continue uh, with your statement. So when you are doing your, uh, the third one of information, you want to emphasize on the information that was given rather than the authors. Uh, you want to emphasize on the key issue or key information that you want to convey. So you can say school managers ought to be prepared for their role as instructional leaders in order to adequately support teachers in aspects of teaching. And you, you put the quote, uh, Greenwood and Lewis, uh, 1984. So this approach also, this various approach will help you to be able to uh, maintain a flow and logic in your arguments or in your writing so that it's easy to read and it's fluent. So some of these discourse markers, uh, Prof has already touched on them and uh, some of them are just here uh, additional to what has been posted or some of them even the same, you can refer to them later. When you want to compare or contrast ideas, you want to prove something, uh, you want to show exceptions, you, uh, you want to repeat or refer back to something or these are all uh, discourse markers that can help you. Okay, you want to emphasize on something, you want to give examples. These words can help you and you can actually refer to them when you are writing uh, your literature review. You want to show the order of something initially, previously, following this, subsequently, finally, and you want to conclude. To summarize in conclusion, consequently, as it has been shown, so those are your concluding remarks. So when you are writing your literature review, one of the th key things you must remember is you write, you revise, you write again, you revise, and it's a continuous process uh, until probably you submit your, your, your final, your, your thesis. You find yourself uh, writing and revising your, your literature review again and again, adding information, supporting, and, and things like that. So one of the things you must also avoid is uh, quotes. So you try to use quotes uh, sparingly, uh, rather rephrase, put them in your own words and acknowledge the author that's reference, do proper in-text referencing. <clears throat> so plagiarism, touched on that uh, earlier, in terms of rephrasing, uh, rephrasing can actually help you to avoid uh, uh, committing plagiarism. Uh, so what's plagiarism? To steal or pass off someone's information as if it is yours. And this can be accidental or this can be incidental, okay? However, it's still a breach of academic integrity. And when you are doing your academic writing, you must avoid any form of plagiarism. And like I said before, uh, uh, rephrasing can help you do that. If you can rephrase properly, then you'll be able to avoid uh, any form of plagiarism. Also avoid copying and pasting from electronic sources. Uh, because that will be picked directly when you load them on the eternity in or any plagiarism site. So uh, when you are reading, uh, the purpose you read, you write, you take, you read, you take down notes, and you try to understand what the, 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 the original writer, the, the author is saying, and you also try to put it in your own words, with that will always be uh, the best way for you to write, rather than writing, that having direct quotes, or rather than uh, plagiarizing. So you read the text, you take down notes, you understand it, and uh, you put it in your own words. <clears throat> and always make sure you acknowledge the source of your work. So 
um, avoiding plagiarism if we take it to a topic like designing the learning approach for postgraduate students. So the original quotation from Thompson or read differentiation as an instructional approach uh, promotes a balance between student styles and the student's ability. Differentiated instruction provides the student with options for processing and internalizing the content and for constructing new learning in order to progress academically. So when you take a text like this, you first look at what is your, uh, uh, your topic. What are you trying to take from this author's uh, quotation? And you take essential ideas and information from the original source. Okay, you need to, you should be able to condense it in your own words, using your own words and make a proper sentence and make sure that what you are saying or what you are taking from that original quote is related to, to the topic or the thing you are trying to investigate. So it paraphrased, and there can be many ways. I mean, if we give uh, the same, these frames to all, to, to I think all of us, then I think the paraphrasing for all of us will be different. However, we need to make sure that the sense is kept, is there. We put it in our own words, and uh, we look at the relevance, what information is relevant to what we are trying to, to convey uh, to, 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 the, to, to the readers, to our readers. So based on the topic that was chosen here, we can say lecturers use different instructional um, approach by customizing lessons to every student's learning and skills needs. So that's a way you can do it. You can you can paraphrase, use your own words. If the topic was different, probably uh, the paraphrase uh, would be the paraphrase sentence will also be different. Okay, integrating uh, direct quotes into your your text, and we said that you need to avoid direct quotes as much as possible. Avoid them unless it's re it's really necessary for you to have them. Uh, you need to avoid citing uh, a one source too many times. You need to avoid literature that is not relevant to what you're trying to study. So you need to, to, to stick to literature that will add value to what you're trying to say or that is related to your, to your topic. Okay, uh, you need to oversight, uh, avoid to oversight uh, definitions. Um, if the those will just make your work clumsy, and but that's not what you want. You want your your work to be fluent, and you want uh, people to to be able to catch up the ideas that you are trying to uh, to portray or to convey to the readers. Uh, as Elia said, you need to avoid too much quoting. Rather use them, uh, read the the original text, understand the original text, put it in your own words, write them, and uh, a reference acknowledge the author. So the theoretical and the conceptual framework. So a good literature review will help you to develop a theoretical framework and a good conceptual framework as well for your research. And uh, these are both uh, aspects of research that help us to give credibility to our work and we need to include them. What theories or what theory is, our, is my work based on? You need to identify those. And if you do proper reading, a search of literature, as Prof was, was indicating, you look at what people have wrote or what people have written about uh, the topic that you, you are interested in or that you are writing on, what the different authors have said. Probably you'll be able to pick up the theories that are related to uh, the topic that you want to investigate. So a conceptual framework and a theoretical framework, uh, they are conceptually different and uh, that they are both tools that are used to conceptualize uh, research. And it's important for you to understand this. So the theoretical framework is the foundation of, of your work and it helps you to, 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 to channel your work and it helps to give credibility, it helps to give weight to the work that you're doing. Uh, and it also serves as a roadmap for developing your arguments. Okay, so it guides you in developing your argument. So the theoretical framework, uh, you can base it on one theory or several theories, depending on the topic that you are investigating. And um, its role is to shape your research question, or you, it also guide you in your research hypothesis, uh, guide you even in your data collection and data analysis and you increase the credibility of your work, as we've, we've said. So, but how do you write a theoretical framework? 
uh, you need to identify the key concept. What are the key concepts in the topic that I'm trying to investigate? Um, and uh, how those which, which theories relate to this uh, concept that I'm trying to investigate in my study? And uh, how this theory, after deciding on the theory, you need to to identify how that theory helps you in achieving your objectives. So the purpose of the theoretical framework is not just to take a theory and put it there and not use it. It needs to be reflected in your work, in uh, the different sections of your work, in your analysis, in your research questions, in the way you argue your points within your, in your work or in your research. And that uh, addresses how it fits into your research. So the purpose, you need to be able to contextualize that theory uh, within your research and see how it how it fits into how the broad, that broader how your your research fits into that broader picture uh, portrayed by the theory or the theoretical framework. So if we look at the an example of a theoretical framework here, uh, we see uh, from perceived parental entrepreneurial passion to technopreneurship intention, the moderating role of perseverance and perceived parental entrepreneurial rewards. So one of the theories that we relate to this is the social uh, cognitive career theory. And uh, this, um, this theory has three main, uh, how can I say, PG pillars or branches. So it talks about self-efficacy and it talks about outcome expectations and personal goals. So they're saying for someone to become a, an entrepreneur, uh, their parental their, their, their parental orientation, if their parents were entrepreneurs, then they have more chances of becoming entrepreneurs uh, when, when they grow up. So self-efficacy, that's the, the, when they believe in their own competencies, and generally they will be oriented to go to, uh, through studies that are linked to uh, their parents' careers. Uh, outcome expectation, they have seen their parents done it, they have seen their parents uh, uh, succeed in it. Um, so they are more likely uh, to have to, to, to have positive outcome expectations. And uh, based on their parents' goals, sometimes the parents are role models most of the times for students. They can also set their, parent, uh, their, their goals to uh, be entrepreneurs. So the, the, the perceived entrepreneurial passion can affect the child's um, intention of choosing a career in um, entrepreneurship, technopreneurship. So this is the theory and this are these different access. If you use this theory as a, a theoretical framework, so you need to consider the, the theory, the social cognitive uh, career theory, and you need to also co consider all its tenets. So those will be self-efficacy, uh, outcome expectation, and personal goals. This need to reflect in um, in, in your in your work in the work that you are doing, so you need to use uh, all the three aspects or all the aspects of the theory. I think there are further readings there on uh, 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 Professor Ngulube, who has written extensively on the theoretical and the, the conceptual framework that you can on consult to um, to add uh, maybe to what I'm saying. <clears throat> So the conceptual framework uh, is also known as the analytical framework. So at the view of the conceptual framework, just without even reading your work, someone should have an idea of what you are trying to do, what you are trying to investigate, what are, what, what are the main concepts that you are considering within your work, what is your research problem, what are the hypothesized relationships, what are, you, what are the, the intent or the outcome, the... the, the the, the hypothesized outcome, what are you intending to, to achieve at the end of your, of your literature review? So it provides an understanding, a general understanding of what you are trying to do. And uh, it can also include theories, it can also include concepts, main concepts in your, in your, in your research. So if we look at, there's a concept, if you look at the previous example that was taken, entrepreneurship, passion, technopreneurship, uh, perceived parental entrepreneurial rewards. So those could be your concepts, concepts that you want to use, you want to portray, you want to demonstrate, or you want to show the relationship, you want to investigate uh, in your research. So the conceptual framework needs to show a, a picture of that. I think we have an example that can help us uh, further as we, as we progress. Um, 
So it provides you a, a scheme of the, 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 the concepts or the conceptual, it provides you a scheme of the, the, the concept that you've selected and uh, how you are prioritizing your variables. Um, it also provides uh, coherence and it also helps you as you are progressing in your research. <coughs> Sorry, it can happen as you write so many pages that you lose track. So the conceptual framework will also help to guide you to bring you back on track. So it also serves as a, a, a self audit. At the end of the day, have I addressed all the concepts that are in my conceptual framework? At the end of the day, have I touched on all the theories and uh, and how they relate to my work as I'm writing? So at the end of the day, you can always refer to the conceptual framework um, uh, to guide you. So uh, the conceptual framework and the topic which you've chosen, obviously, uh, they must need to sh they, they need to reflect your interest as a researcher. Uh, they need to reset the concept that you are considering, which is probably something that others have already researched on, and they can also touch on the theories that you are considering uh, within your your research. So a conceptual framework, like I've already said, it can include elements uh, elements of of the theory or co certain concepts within a theory or certain concepts. Or different concepts within different theories that have been put together uh, that speak or that help you better answer your research um, questions. So there are five ways of formulating um, a conceptual framework. You can put together concepts from different theories. You can use aspects of theories. Uh, you can combine uh, concepts from existing, sorry, existing literature. You can integrate uh, concepts uh, from more than one theory and you can incorporate aspects of a theory or theories to come together with or to put together uh, the conceptual framework for your for, for your research. So when you are doing your conceptual framework, keep that the, the, the question in your mind should be if somebody looks at this picture and usually you can do it uh, using narratives, but it's preferential to do it uh, using diagrams. Do they understand what I'm trying to do here? Does it does it tell a story about what I'm trying to convey, what I'm trying to investigate? Does it say a story? If just by looking at the picture or at that diagram, can someone give have an idea or a full idea of what I'm trying to do in this research? So if your question is yes, then you have a, probably have a good conceptual framework. But if your question is no, you need to work on it again. As you said, you must revise, you write, and uh, uh, revise and write again. Okay, then designing your, your conceptual framework, key to that, after deciding on your topic, you need to identify uh, specific concepts, variables, or constructs that speak to your research title. Um, and after you've done that, you probably have to research what have others said about what I'm saying, uh, what are the, the contrary views, what are the similar views, the similarities uh, with other authors, and you need to bring them together. Uh, and as you do that, you'll be able to identify, and as you are reading, you even be identifying the theories that some authors who have investigated something similar to what you are trying to do, maybe not in the same context as Prof was saying, somebody can have a study in America and you're having that study in South Africa. The, 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 the context are different, maybe the, the topic is the same. You might find the theory, that the theories might suit in both cases, or that the concepts might suit in both cases, even though the context is different. So when you look at those things, you'll be able to identify or the, the existing literature, if you read extensively, you'll be able to identify cons, uh, cons, uh, concepts and theories that have been uh, touched before by, the, by authors that wrote on a topic, the same topic or a similar topic to what you're writing. And put, you can put them now together, having your research problem in mind, basing, based on your own uh, unique uh, problem that you're trying to investigate, the unique research questions that you're trying to answer, you can put something together, okay? Um, so you can use these use boxes, you can use your arrows, you can use your lines and uh, to, to, invest, to, to show the direction of the relationship as you're, as you, you're drawing your conceptual framework. So some of the things that you, you want to know when you're doing your conceptual framework, or your dependent variable, uh, that is the, the, the main outcome you want to measure. Uh, your independent variables, uh, those are the variable that influence uh, the dependent variable. 
um, so the dependent variable it's 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 the it's it's affected by the independent variable okay you have the moderating variable that influences the strength or direction of the relationship uh, you have the mediating uh, variable that explains the relationship between uh, the dependent the independent and the dependent variable or clarifies how the independent variable affects uh, the dependent variable so the dependent variable depends on the independent variable okay so any change in the independent variable will affect the dependent variable the control variable is often kept constant or control to avoid influence of other factors uh, that may affect the relationship then we have the confounding variable which is uh, scarcely i don't want to say scarcely used in research but it's an unmeasured variable the, that is related to both the dependent and the independent variable within your research. <clears throat> so if we look at the uh, this example here, we are trying to look at the impact of social media usage on academic performance among college students. Okay, so we see our independent variable, social media usage. Our dependent uh, variable, it's uh, academic performance. So we're trying to say, looking at the direction of the arrow, you see the arrow, the arrow is pointing from the independent variable to the dependent variable. We are trying to say that the, the social media usage is affecting uh, the academic performance. Okay, so the more, in this case, hypothetically, the more you use uh, social media, then uh, the more you spend time on social media, the less uh, the, your academic performance will be. Okay, so we can see clearly which one is depending on which one. Your academic performance depends on uh, your social media usage, given the context or the topic that we're trying to investigate. Okay, that we have the moderating variable, uh, which is your, 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 your self-discipline here. So we're saying that even though the, the social media might affect your academic performance, your level of self-discipline can moderate this, this effect. So you can have time when you're using social media uh, for one hour, then the rest of the time you study. Or for somebody who is not disciplined at all, then they can spend the whole day uh, on social media and the, 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 the impact of social media usage on their academic performance might be uh, higher than someone who self-discipline. So the moderating uh, 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 variable here, we have the uh, study habits. It also depends on your study habits. You moderate the way uh, your social media usage affects your academic uh, performance. Then we have the control, our control variable here, which is evaluation test and method, which is just there on its own. It also affects the academic um, performance. And uh, the confounding variable, you see there is no arrow there. Uh, it doesn't show any specific arrow, so it affects both of them. Okay. Uh, so that's that's it for, for, for the example. These are the references that you can consult. And uh, this So over to you, Prof, I, to continue.